name is Sanford Barsky. I'm professor and chairman of the Department of Pathology at the University of Nevada School of Medicine. I'm also chief of pathology and vice president of the Nevada Cancer Institute in, in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm very pleased today to be able to use Path Exchange to illustrate an important lesion in breast pathology. I am a breast pathologist. I've been doing breast pathology for a number of years as well. You know, today is the digital age. And we are in the era of digital pathology, which allows us to share interesting cases over the internet anywhere in the world, to diagnose interesting cases anywhere in the world, and most importantly, to provide a useful educational resource to anyone with these cases to illustrate significant pathology. Today, I will use Path Exchange to take you through a very important lesion of the breast which I have been fortunate to acquire that I'd like to share with you. This is a uh, 55-year-old female who went in for a routine mammogram screening and was actually noticed to have abnormal uh, microcalcifications on the x-ray film and underwent an excisional biopsy. And here we see the thumbnail uh, digital photograph of the uh, biopsy. And uh, path exchange allow and virtual microscopy allows us to analyze this image digitally. And we can see here that we have the luxury of going uh, under different magnifications. We have the luxury of pointing to any field of view that we wish to look at. And like any pathologist, uh, even with digital microscopy, we duplicate um, what we normally do with the glass slide alone. And that is we survey the slide under low magnification. And for example, here we see uh, that this, this is a breast. It, it, it consists of the red connective tissue and the, the white uh, holes in the tissue, which are the adipose tissue. And then we can see that there are some uh, normal lobules, which are depicted here, normal asini, asinor structures. And these, are, these consist of two cells each. And they're in a normal lobular architecture. And we're now looking at, at a 2x magnification, so at a scanning magnification. We see here a, what appears to be, a, a, actually here we see what appears to be a normal acinus structure. This, this area here was once this area, but when the proliferation occurred, it distended these ducts. These ducts are at least 20 times in diameter compared to these. Now we're going to go at higher magnification at both of these areas. So let's start at this area and we're going to zoom um, from 2x to 4x. And uh, when we look at this area, we, we can even go higher to 10x. And we see, in fact, they are normal asini. They are lined by two cell layers, a myoepithelial and an epithelial layer. They are well circumscribed and they resemble normal lobules of the breast. Now, if we go back to 2x magnification, we're going to contrast this area that we just looked at with this area, which I had mentioned, uh, consists of larger ducts that seem to be distended and we're going to increase the magnification to 4x in this area, and we immediately see the explanation for the abnormal mammogram. Remember, I mentioned that there was microcalcification seen on the mammogram, and we see here the microcalcifications, which we can confirm if we go to 10x magnification. And here we see the actual uh, blue amorphous and somewhat concentric, some are laminar, in terms of their formation. These are microcalcifications. More importantly, however, if we again go back to 4x, and we're shuttling between magnifications as pathologists do with a microscope. The virtual microscopy allows us to do the same thing with greater efficiency. We see that the microcalcifications are accompanied by an intraductal proliferative process, which we now look at again at higher magnification 
and we see that this introductal uh, proliferative process consists of a monotonous proliferation of cells, which are, are very pink in appearance. We could look even closer at 20x. We see these cells. They're very monotonous. Uh, they are filling the duct. Inside the lumen of the duct is this microcalcification. Now, if we look at a duct that's next door, we see what's called architectural distension or distortion. We see these false lumina forming. And these lumina that are forming have a very rigid Roman arch characteristic. They're called the Roman arches of Azopardi. He was a pathologist who first described this appearance. But the nature of the process is these large pink monotonous cells that are filling the ducts and they're producing these very rigid Roman arches, these false lumina that also have been described as Swiss cheese. The appearance that I'm describing, these large cells that are monotonous, that are forming rigid arches accompanied by microcalcifications and descending the ducts of the breast is pathognomonic for the lesion called non commono ductal carcinoma in situ. These lesions are thought to be clonal in origin. They are precursor lesions to invasive cancer. So we are compelled to look at this case now that we've made the diagnosis of non commono DCIS we're compelled to see if there's any areas of invasion. And as it turns out, I had previously looked at this case and there are no areas of invasion. The, the proliferative process is confined to the ducts, but this lesion has to be fully extirpated. This lesion, ductal carcinoma in situ, threatens the breast. It does not threaten life, however, because the cells have not escaped the confines of the basement membrane. They cannot get into the lymphatics. They cannot metastasize. And this is an example of a breast lesion that when detected by mammogram can be very useful in terms of curing this patient, catching the, the cancerous process in an in situ stage when it is treatable and curable by surgical extirpation. Now, Things like marginal status, has the surgeon got this entire lesion out, are all important. And so one also has to view on the slides the, the, the nature of the edge or the margin. And we can see here that the edge is not involved. There is a good rim of normal connective tissue around this particular uh, ductal carcinoma in situ. And um, we have the luxury of looking at this lesion again at higher power. We can share the image through the internet or we can archive the image in digital files. If this patient recurs with the disease subsequently or develops an invasive cancer, which is not likely, uh, we can compare that the nature of that subsequent lesion to the present lesion because uh, we can readily uh, retrieve this lesion through uh, the uh, benefits of virtual microscopy and, and digital pathology. You know, recently mammography has been in the news and recommendations for mammography screening have changed because in many cases mammography is not effective in detecting uh, early breast cancer and doesn't affect age-adjusted survival. But this case illustrates a case that was successfully detected by mammography based on the abnormal microcalcifications which were confirmed pathologically and which accompany this important lesion called non commono ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS, which needs to be diagnosed and, and removed, which was the case in this particular patient, confirmed by the digital pathology slides. I think the uh, technology now in digital pathology has moved to the point where the quality of the image on the computer screen is superior in resolution, in detail, in texture, than the analog image that one sees with the eye through the microscope. We're at the point where the technology has surpassed the human eye. Um, Path Exchange also will contain a lot of other interesting and similar cases.